I suppose we'll discuss the the news obviously that broke uh, last week in regards to Liam Cattle, who obviously has stepped down as Waterford senior hurling manager. That obviously follows on from the news that Colin Bonner was sacked from Tipperary. I mean, quite crazy news, really. It all kind of happened so quickly. I mean, it, you know, just a lot of people might say there's a bit of a coincidence there, but I think it's very likely that the two are connected. And there's certainly a lot of rumours going around that Cattle is going to be the man to to take over as Tipperary manager. He obviously won an under-20 All-Ireland, won a, an All-Ireland as a minor manager as well. I suppose, first of all, what are your thoughts on the, the entire scenario? I mean, very harsh, I felt, on Colin Bonner and, and his sack. And, like, I know Tipperary didn't win a game in the championship this year, but it was his first year. And, like, Tipperary still gave a couple of good performances. And, you know, it was difficult coming in after Liam Sheedy, considering there was a big turnover of players. But what are your thoughts on, on the entire situation, I suppose, starting off with the sacking of Colin Bonner? I mean, when it initially came out, I uh, I was actually on a podcast that like the GA Show podcast, and I was I was I, I was on with uh, Joe McCarthy, Patrick O'Halloran, and I was just I was sickened by it to be honest with you. But the next day, when the news broke with Liam Cattle, I could see why he got sacked. But even um, Don Logue was mentioning on the so the live version of the Sunday game now yesterday during the other final coverage that a certain element is now creeping into the GA. That there's a soccer element. I actually don't like this. That they're just sacking managers. Look, he's an amateur, Colin Bonner. I mean, I think it's absolutely. I was. I know Liam Cattle's going to come in. I do think Liam Cattle will do a good job with these Tipperary players, and I do think eventually they will challenge Limerick and Kilkenny and all the rest in the near future. But Colin Bonner only had one year out of a three-year term. He was literally um, explaining his plans for 2023. And the night, the day after, he gets a phone call. Sorry, Colin, you're gone. I mean, where is the ethics with Tipperary GA? I mean, I mean, it's an absolute mess. I know Liam Cass is probably the better manager. The problem uh, on my podcast, uh, a Wexford guy came on, Gary Dorr for the Hurling podcast, and he rightly said Liam Cahill was Tipperary's first choice when Liam Sheedy left. And I think, and he thinks that um, Tipperary put all the eggs in the wood basket. And then he tore them down and went with Waterford. And rightly so, uh, may I add. But then they got Colin Bonner as a bit of a quick fix. And I mean, I mean, just to play him like that, I mean, it's sickening. It really is sickening. And I just don't want this sort of culture creeping into the GA. There's even, there's, I thought it was just fan culture with, um, you know, fans on the hill or something like that. Um, soccer culture doing soccer chants. But it's creeping in further into the GA. And I think it's absolutely ludicrous. It's absolutely ludicrous what has happened with Colin Bonner. He might not have the best track record with the likes of Carlo, with the likes of Wexford, but he's given his all to Tipperary GA for how many years now? And just to sack him. I mean, geez, like, um, like I hope to God now, I hope, like, Liam Cahill's going to take the Tipperary job. I think everybody um, and their dog knows this. But I just, I just hope that Liam Cahill is, treat, is not treated the same way as Colin Bonner. Because it's absolute disgrace what happened um, last Thursday evening. I mean, it was it was ridiculous what happened. I was sickened by it. Liam Cahill, I do think, will do a great job with Tipperary. But the way Colin Bonner left, relieved of his duties. Whenever did you hear that in the J? I mean, it's it's an absolutely disgraceful decision. And you mentioned Liam Sheedy. We mentioned it on your podcast last year. He didn't bring the young players through. He only brought through Jake Morris. Colin Bonner brought through a load of young players. It was always going to be transitional period for Tipperary. And as we said with Limbrick as well, they produced their best performance of the year against Limbrick and against Watford as well, let's not forget. They only pre- did not perform in two games when you look at the bigger picture, Claire Cork. So I, it was always going to be a transitional period for Tipperary. There was Porrick Marr gone, Brendan Marr gone. That's your half back line. I mean, I mean, it was absolutely sickening what happened with Colin Bonner. The disrespect was absolutely unbelievable. And I hope to God that doesn't happen with Liam Cahill. Though. I mean, I really hope it doesn't happen. But with Tipperary GA, with putting a stunt like that last Thursday, you never know. And it probably will creep into more counties, football and hurling, in the next few years. I hope it doesn't, but it probably will. Yeah, I mean, it's it's... It's one of them as well, like with 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 the whole scenario. Like I think people forget as well. Like Tipperary's 
one of their best performances was against Waterford on the opening day, but that was when Waterford were in flying form. Like that was when Waterford had just come on the back of, of, of obviously winning the league. They played teams at the wrong times as well. Like they played Cork towards the end when they started to build a bit of momentum as well. Like they just happened to face a lot of sides at the wrong times. And let's not forget Shamie Callan was, was injured as well. Like who's been, mm-hmm. you know, obviously Tipperary sort of stand out forward really in the last couple of seasons. So, you know, they've had a couple of things go against them. And as you said there, I do think like Liam Cattle is the better manager and he is probably going to do better potentially in the role than Colin Bonner. And that's no disrespect to, to Colin Bonner. I just think when you look at Liam Cattle's track record with the under 20s and the minors, he obviously knows the lads. He done a fantastic job at Waterford. He kind of took them out of the doldrums a little bit following on. Um, you know, from obviously the 2017 all Ireland final under Derek McGrath and everything else. So, you know, like when you look at it, it probably is the right decision, but I think it's just the way that it's been handled. Like, I think, you know, Tipperary should have made this more clear, in my opinion, from the get go. Like, it was looking perfectly clear that Colin Bonner was going to be staying on as Tipperary manager. And then, you know, whether they, whether one of the Tipperary officials in the board spoke to, Liam Cahill and all of a sudden the decision was made but I feel like they should have stuck to their guns and you know like Liam Cahill turned them down last year they should have stuck to their guns in my opinion and stuck with Colin Bonner I know like look it's probably the right decision to bring Cahill in but I do think there should be an element of respect there that should be kept especially with Colin Bonner and Tipperary and I think it's yeah it definitely does leave a bit of sour taste in in the mouths I'd imagine of, of Tipperary fans kind of seeing that news it what does, yeah, and uh, as I mentioned there, he was he was outlining his plans for 2023 and then to get sat the next day. I mean, the communication was all over the place. He obviously taught Colin Bonner that oh, I'm going to stay on, I'm going to do a better job than this year. We'll get our players back, we'll get Shamey Cannon back, we'll get our main players back. The younger players will develop into better players and we'll move motoring on into the next year. And then the next day, it's a call. Sorry, Colin, you're relieved of your duties, you're gone. Good luck. I mean, it's it's absolutely ludicrous. It's ludicrous. I do think Liam Cal is the better manager. No disrespect to Colin Bonner. I do think Liam Cal will do a better job seeing as he, what he did with Watford and the Tipperary of the 20s. Let's not forget as well. But the whole situation, how it has been handled, why did, if they wanted to get rid of Colin Bonner, why did they make it clear a week earlier at least? I mean, and to just get a phone call. The morning after outlining your plans for 2023. I, I mean, where's the logic, Aaron? I mean, I, I, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. Do you think this is a thing creeping into the GA or is it something the Tipperary just did unethically and um, it, it the news just broke? Or do you think it's going through other counties as well? Yeah, well, I, th- I think it's definitely there. Like, I think you all, all you need to do is look on Twitter and you'll see managers being, you know, loads of people calling for managers to be sacked and this and that. And, you know, Desi for a lot of people look for Desi Farrell to be sacked. And, you know, when obviously with Pierre Keane last year in charge of Kerry, I remember a lot of people were going mad. Even actually poor at Joyce. I remember when Galway lost to Mayo. I remember, um, you know, this is this Galway football page that I follow and all the comments were literally saying that Joyce needs to go and they need to, you know, they need a new manager, a new man in. And look at them now, like they're in an all Ireland final. Like no, no one, you know, in, in a month of Sundays is ever going to want Joyce to go anywhere anytime soon now. Like, so it's kind of crazy how, how quick things can turn. But as you said there, like it is, it is very much creeping in. Like it's, it, and it's strange as well. Like, like it, it doesn't seem to be there for some counties, but I do feel that a lot of county boards for whatever reason are handling these situations really bad. Like even the whole Andy McEntee Mead situation as well. Like last year where, you know, it got sent back to the county board and then, you know, Obviously, the clubs had to vote them back in and just all sorts of confusion really creeping in really between managers, some managers sticking around and all of a sudden being sacked and being let go, everything else sort of going on there. So, unfortunately, it looks like it is creeping in in, in some ways, which, um, you know, I'm not really too sure why. I mean, it's like I don't think county boards, you know, they probably do see a lot of what goes on on social media and they see what people are saying and all the rest, but... I just think the way it's been handled is is really badly. Like I think, you know, obviously Tipperary are uh, you know one of the most successful hurling counties in the game. So you know, I I could understand that personally if they did say after they got beat, 
um, by Cork and they exited the championship having lost four games. And I could understand if they turned around and said, well, look, we're going to make a change here. This isn't working out, unfortunately. I know it's only a year, but thanks very much for, for your service. And then they make the decision there and then that's it. But not this sort of like, we'll keep you around and oh, there's a better option over here. And just being a, all of it being leaked in the media as well. Like, you know, I think that's the, the big problem, I think. Yeah, definitely. And uh, another point I wanted to put across, Joe McCarthy mentioned this as well, player power. Like, I, I don't know how much uh, the temporary players play in this. I think it's under wraps now. But I don't know, like, do you think the temporary players voted them out or not? Like, player power has been prevalent for ages now, ever since um, the car player strikes in 2008, even with the footballers. Like, we voted Teddy Holland, when Teddy Holland was appointed new manager of uh, the car footballers, did the footballers just didn't want him in charge? And then Connor Coonan get yes, Connor Coonan bought us in all Ireland. But at the same time, where's the ethics? Like, you know, I mean, mm. it, it does it didn't seem to be there for a long period after that. But I just wonder with this temporary situation, did the players vote him out? If they did, shame on them. Because because they're Colin Bonner's the manager. He's in charge of the players. He like if anything, the county board and Colin Bonner should stand over the players like. You know, it's, I mean, it's it's ridiculous what has happened to the last week. I hope, honestly, it doesn't happen again. But seeing, I just think a professional culture, a soccer culture is creeping into GA. I don't get me wrong. I support Liverpool and all that. I, I went to a few Ireland soccer games. And I get to Cork City soccer games. But I don't want this professional soccer culture creeping into an amateur game. I just, I just don't want it. Like, you know, I don't think you'd want it either. I don't think John McMahon wants it. I don't think Patrick Sharkey wants it. I don't think GA Edits wants it. I don't think anybody wants it. We just want our game back. You know, that that's the main thing. Like, they're amateur players. And even with Power Joyce, like, Phil is voting the most, uh, saying, oh, he should, he should go despite having a year or two left in his contract. I mean, you know, these managers gave up so much time to try and uh, impress the fans. Where's the appreciation? I mean, it's, ridic- it's ridiculous at times. And some temporary fans are actually saying they call a bother deserve to be sacked. That That's the culture now, you know? I mean, I don't like it, Aaron. I really don't like it. I hope it, it's it's getting out of our game. I hope it's not creeping up out of our game. But unfortunately, I just think player power, potentially, and a soccer culture is creeping into a amateur game. And I, I just don't like it. Yeah, and I suppose lastly on this topic then, like obviously Liam Cahill stepping down as as Waterford manager, like obviously Waterford now looking for, for a new manager themselves. But what were your thoughts on Liam Cahill stepping down as Waterford manager in the first place? I mean, you know, would Colin Bonner have, have been sacked if Tipperary or if Liam Cahill didn't step down? We don't really know. But in my opinion, I was a little bit surprised, to be honest, because look, I know Waterford in the end sort of had a, a difficult enough year, but... I still think they've very good group of lads, very good group of players. You know, a couple of lads obviously coming through the ranks at the minute as well. You know, and I don't think Waterford would have been too far away with Liam Cahill at the ranks next year. So what were your thoughts on on him stepping down as Waterford manager? Well, he had three years, so maybe it's not surprising. Like, Waterford do have uh, very good players, as you say, coming through. And they reached an honour the final in 2020. They were very close to 2021. They just had an off year this year, winning the league, winning the league in the process, which is... A, to a itself a very good achievement but honestly I think it was something behind the scenes the Tipperary County Board maybe just sneaked to Liam Cahill and said look we're going to sack this guy though and you could come in or something like that or it was Colin Bonner got sacked Liam Cahill sees the news and he says sorry I'm stepping down you know I mean I mean at the same time you can't fault Liam Cahill he's served three years with Watford like it is in his own county at the end of the day it's he he was he's a Tipperary man, he's played for Tipperary in the past. He was an under 20 manager with Tipperary. And honestly, I just think he was re- waiting for the right opportunity to get this um Tipperary job. But look, it's gonna be a tough decision now for Watford. I'm here. David Fitz is in the running. Uh Derek McGrath back in the running. I personally think Eddie Brennan would be very good for Watford though. I think he has a very good C V with uh Kula, also with Leash. I think he has the all capabilities of being a manager and you're, lots of people are saying, oh, it's a Kilkenny man managed Waterford, a Tipperary man managed Waterford, a Clare man managed Waterford, you know, a Cork man managed Waterford as well, a load of Cork men managed Waterford. So, you know, it's not, it's not, um, it's not as if it's 
it's, it's not normal or anything like that. It is normal in the case of Watford that they get an outside manager. Like, I think, honestly, Davy Fitch will be more suited to Dublin and Eddie Brennan to Watford, but we'll have to wait and see in the next few weeks. But as for Liam Cahill, you were a bit shocked, Darren. After the news, I with Colin Butter, I wasn't shocked, to be honest with you. But if Colin Butter didn't get sacked, I would have been slightly shocked, but at the same time, I, I could understand. Like, it was three years. His three years was up. And he gave his all for Watford G in fairness. Like, he got them to an order to finally won the league title. Couldn't ask for much more with Watford other than, obviously, the name McCarthy Cup. But, obviously, there is that great Limber team around. 